Okay, let's talk about the Praxis 2 exam, specifically on middle school math. And there's a lot of uh, Praxis exams out there, as you probably well know. This particular one here um, that I'm referencing to is uh, code 5169. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you're preparing for this test and um, you're a teacher in a particular state that uses the Praxis exam. Um, I myself am a middle school teacher. My, well, actually, I taught middle school math, high school math, even some college math. And the um, thing is, with the Praxis exams, you know, they are not easy. And that's a good thing, too, because, you don't, you know, we're talking about it's a professional test. You know, you want to, uh, it needs to be rigorous enough to really validate your knowledge of mathematics. And just because this is, you know, quote, middle school math doesn't mean that, you know, all you need to do is, you know, have a strong knowledge of pre-algebra and, and, you know, the sixth grade math, seventh grade math. You really need to have a, a command of a lot of mathematics. And the middle school math practice, if you take a look what's on there, it's, it's you know, it's a pretty good level uh, math, you know, pretty advanced level math. So um, the whole idea here, what I'm stating right up front, what I'm probably already telling you, um, is you need to study for it. Now, if you're looking for a really good uh, study course, I actually offer a uh, study uh, course for this super uh, comprehensive. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But with that being said, I got a little problem here for you, a little pop quiz, if you will, just to kind of see where you're at, um, you know, help gauge uh, where you're currently at in math. It's certainly not, uh, there's a lot of topics on this particular exam, but this is one type of problem that you should be able to uh, to get you know, maybe uh, thinking about it for a second, but hopefully it's fairly easy to you. So let me go ahead and explain it to you, then we'll do it together. So here I have a graph. Um, I'll state that this is a graph of a quadratic function. You can see some information here. What I'd like you to do is to evaluate this particular function for f equals uh, f of negative 2x. Okay, so I'd like you to evaluate this function for that particular value and this is all you're given. So you might want to pause the video, think about it for a second. I'll certainly go through it. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, um, I don't want to give you a full lecture here. That's not the point of this video. That's now, if you need uh, full comprehensive lessons and examples and all that kind of good stuff, you'll want to check out my course. But here, I'm going to just assume that you know you're um, you know pretty much up to speed on a lot of this topic. So this is a quadratic function. It's bouncing off the x-axis at six. Okay, so that means that there's a double root here, right? So it's quadratic. Um, which means there's always two roots, right, to a quadratic uh, function either real or complex. In this, in this case, you can see it's bouncing off the x-axis, so there's two roots here. So I can describe what's going on here um, in terms of uh, two linear factors. So I could say, okay, that's x minus 6 times x minus 6 equals 0, right? So if I had some sort of quadratic function and I was able to factor it, and I'm certainly setting it equal to zeros to find the zeros or roots. This would be the scenario, right? Because I would set uh, both of these factors equal to zero, and I would get x is equal to six twice, and that's what this graph is showing, right? You're getting a double root at six. So what I can do now, being that this, uh, these two linear factors, uh, this product describes what's going on here, I could simply just foil these guys together, just uh, kind of multiply this out. So let's do that now. So that's x squared, that's negative 6x, and I got another negative 6x over here. And then I have a positive 36. All right, and uh, let's clean this up. So I have x squared minus 12x plus 36. So this is my quadratic function. Let's go ahead and write that this way. So this is this is the, the the quadratic function that we just solved, right? So if I told you to find the solutions to this to solve this, I would go ahead and set this equal to zero, and then go ahead and obviously it would be uh, factorable. I would factor it in this way. I would get my two double roots, and that's what the graph shows. Now, the key here is to answer the question, right? So I want to evaluate the function for f equals uh, or f of negative two x. So now let's go ahead and do that now. So f of negative 2x, you got to be careful here 
with these negatives, right? So just use parentheses, negative 2x in parentheses squared minus 12 times negative 2x plus 36. Now one thing that I learned uh, when I started teaching was just, you know, when you when you know your you know math yourself, right? So like let's say you have a strong math background, obviously, you know, you're teaching, uh, you're going to be teaching middle school math, so you know math, but as a teacher, and, you know, definitely don't want to patronize you because if you're an experienced teacher, you already know this. But if you're new at teaching, it's something that you'll really have to, um, you know, kind of keep in the forefront of your mind is that everything you do is you got to do for the consumption of your students, i.e. the way you write and you explain, you know, and, uh, you know, the way you're going to do things like on your chalkboard or your whiteboard. You got to do things step by steps because this is the stuff that's going to be going into your students notes. and quite frankly you know that's that's to me that was kind of a skill that I had to develop over time and one of the things you can do and I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent here but one of the things you could do is to really get with those top experienced teachers in your school and you know like learn from them okay they're really a great resource okay on how to present uh, information in terms of math okay but anyways that's kind of a little side commentary let's go ahead and finish this out so I have um, this uh, parentheses negative 2x, and when I square this, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 4x squared. Okay, so now here I have a negative 12 times a negative 2x. So that's going to be positive 24x plus 36. Okay, and that would be our answer. So hopefully you were able to figure this out. Okay, now at this point, if you're like, oh yeah, that's easy. I got that, but you couldn't do it initially or you kind of struggled with it but then you know when you followed what I was doing it was easy that's good as well however that's not good enough right what you really need to do is to review do a lot of review for this uh, practice exam so you can see the solution and approach it and the only way you're going to really get to that point is to just study there's a lot of things to cover but it's going to serve you well anyways because this is professional knowledge you need to have okay and you just really got to get in a state of immersion. But anyways, um, hopefully this little pop quiz kind of warmed up your thinking about, um, you know, middle school math. Again, you're teaching middle school math, but the Praxis uh, middle school math exam is going to have far more than like pre-algebra or basic algebra on there. You really need to take a look at what's on there. It's, it's a considerable amount of math. So again, I'll leave a link to my course. Uh, if you like my teaching style, you can check that out. Also, I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel if you, if you, uh, you know, like the way I teach. It definitely can help you out prepare for this uh, practice exam. If you enjoyed this little pop quiz, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Uh, like, you know, are you uh, sure, you know, you want to teach middle school math, maybe you high school math? Are you going to go for another certification? I actually started off in high school. And I really enjoyed that. And I said, oh, let me try middle school and thinking that it was going to be easier because the math level would be easier. And it was challenged in a different way. So teaching math is a, really an awesome uh, career. And, um, and the thing about it that I learned was, yeah, even though I have, let's say, a, a degree, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree, you're, you're like, you really do have to get yourself immersed at the level of math that your students are going to be learning, right? algebra for example you think oh just basic algebra now there's a lot you can really go deep 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 into that subject and you want to because it will help you you know learn creative ways to teach the material you got to have different ways and strategies to to teach uh, and if you put yourself in a state of immersion the better off you're going to be not only as a teacher but for this exam but with that being said I definitely appreciate your time I wish you all the best on the practice and have a great day